The Fisher projection is a method that we have for drawing molecules that have one or more chiral carbons. Typically, Fisher projections are only used when a molecule has multiple chiral carbons, but that is not a rule. You could use a Fisher projection for any amount of chiral carbons. So this is going to be defined as a method for drawing a molecule with chiral carbons, or just maybe one. It's used a lot in biology and biochemistry, so if you're going into one of those disciplines, you'll use this notation quite a bit. So what we're going to do in this video is look at the steps for converting our traditional wedge and dash notation into a Fisher projection. And we're gonna use this molecule here as our example. And it might be helpful for you to build a model of this molecule and hold the model in your hand as, as I walk you through these steps. So the first thing that we need to do when we're drawing the Fisher projection is twist this molecule into a different conformation. Remember, conformation just means shape. And right now this molecule is in a staggered conformation, which is the most stable, lowest energy conformation. To draw this in a Fisher projection, we are going to need to rotate all of our carbon-carbon, our internal carbon-carbon single bonds, rotate all of our single bonds so that our carbon skeleton is cis-like, um, which I know I just said a lot of stuff right there. So what we're going to do, first of all, I said rotate the internal carbon-carbon bonds. So that means not the very first carbon-carbon bond and not the very last carbon-carbon double bond, but every single one in the middle. In this particular molecule, there's only one in the middle. But if we had a longer carbon chain, we would be rotating all of the internal carbon-carbon double bonds. So we wanna rotate those bonds so that they are like uh, a cis conformation. Right now, if we're looking at just our carbon skeleton, it's trans-like, and what we want to do is rotate it around those internal bonds so that it is cis-like. And if our carbon skeleton was longer, we would be doing this you know, repeatedly for all of the internal bonds. Now, when we do this rotation, we have to be really careful that we do not change the stereochemistry of the carbon atoms in the molecule. So we have to really look out for what we're doing. I am going to start first by just drawing the carbon skeleton, the four carbons of this molecule. And because I'm not changing the position of this bond right here, I can draw the substituents on this carbon atom without having to worry about um, their wedge or dash status because I'm not changing the position of these substituents. They continue to be up on the top of this bond. However, um, this carbon atom right here, because it is moving up into a different position and its carbon-carbon bond is twisting, I have to think about where the chlorine and the hydrogen will end up when they're up here on this carbon atom. Now, if you have a model, you can physically twist this bond and that will make it a lot easier for you to see what's going to happen. Um, we do know, let's just put some numbers on some of these carbon atoms. So one two three four we know that carbon number four has moved into a down position and up here on carbon number three something is on a wedge and something is on a dash and let's think about if you don't have to happen to have a model let's think about when we do this rotation the chlorine which right now is sticking out in front at us is going to end up sticking in the back of the molecule when it rotates and again this is probably something that's easier to to understand if you're doing this manually doing this with a model so what i've done here here again is just redrawn. I haven't changed the molecule. This is just a different conformation or a different shape of this molecule over here. So once I get it into this conformation, 
I'm going to change my viewing perspective of the molecule. Right now, we are viewing from the side, so we're looking at it this way. And to draw a Fisher projection, we want to be viewing from the top down. So we want to change our viewing perspective. In addition to viewing it from the top down, we also want to view it so that the carbon skeleton is not running horizontally, but rather is running vertically. So I'm gonna start by creating spaces or creating these, these four carbons and their single bond. So I've got carbon number one to two to three to four. When I change my viewing perspective, carbon number one will be sticking up on top, and then two, three, and four will be going down, down the chain. So again, we're changing our viewing perspective so that we're looking at it from the top down, and also so that our carbons are not horizontal, but rather they are vertical. So when we're looking at it from the top down, we do have substituents on carbon number two. We have a bromine and we have a hydrogen. And when we're looking at it from top down, and again, this is gonna be so much easier if you have a model, that bromine substituent is going to be actually over here on the left-hand side of the molecule. And likewise, the hydrogen, which is on the same type of bonds, so they're both on wedges, that hydrogen is going to be sticking over here on the left side as well. Uh, and then for carbon number two, the hydrogen on the dash will be sticking over here on to the right. And the chlorine on the dash also sticking over to the right. Now, if you're looking at this with a model, if you actually have a model handy and you're looking at this, the there are wedges and dashes that we could fill into this drawing. Carbon two and three are really the only ones that will be in the plane of your paper. And the bond from carbon one to carbon two, that will be pointing down. So this would technically be a dash bond. And then similar, the bond from carbon three to four is also pointing down. So that's also a dash bond. And the bromine and hydrogen and hydrogen and chlorine from our new viewing perspective, they are all pointing up at us. So this is the stereochemistry with wedge and dash notation for the molecule from this viewing perspective. Now to organic chemists, to look at it like this is, is um, upsetting because we don't want to have chiral carbons that have two wedges that's not standard notation for us we like our stereo centers or our chiral carbons to have one dash one wedge one dash one wedge and two straight line bonds so this is this is abnormal notation for us but this is the viewing perspective of a fisher projection now to simplify this diagram we replace all bonds with just simply straight line bonds all of them and so we would draw the molecule in this way. This, what I just drew, is the complete Fisher projection for this molecule. It's not unusual for people to actually write atoms into the very top and very bottom position. So because these are carbon number one and carbon number four are both CH3s, it wouldn't be unusual for us to write something there just to make the molecules representation look a little bit cleaner and a little bit nicer. But we never show, we never write the symbol for the carbon atoms that are located at the intersections of the horizontal and vertical bonds. So you're never going to see the letter C written in these positions, uh, carbon two and three in this molecule. We all understand, all of the scientists understand that when we are looking at a Fisher projection, all of the horizontal bonds in the molecule, so every single horizontal bond, is a wedge bond. And one of the ways that I remembered this when I was a student 
was that I visualized the Fisher projection. So this is just a random skeleton. I visualized the Fisher projection like a string of bow ties. So I just kind of imagined a string of bow ties maybe attached to a kite. I'm not a very good drawer, but that, that helped me remember the, um, where the wedge bonds were located on a Fisher projection. So let's just sort of put some notes in here of what we actually did in these steps. The first thing that we did here was rotate the internal carbon-carbon bonds so that our carbon skeleton is cis-like, taking this sort of a pattern. And when we did that, we were really careful about making sure that we had the correct stereochemistry when we do the rotation. If you don't have a model to help you with this, then one way you can check your work is to assign stereochemistry here and then reassign stereochemistry over here. And the stereochemistry should not change in the rotation because you're not doing any sort of manipulation to this carbon atom in the rotation. So first we rotated our internal carbon-carbon bonds, and then we changed our viewing perspective. We viewed the molecule from the top rather than from the side, and also we viewed the molecule with the carbon skeleton in a vertical line. So going like this instead of horizontally like this. And then to complete the Fisher projection, we draw all bonds as straight lines and we eliminate wedge and dash.